Leslie Poles Hartley was a British novelist best known for his country novel, The Go-Between, and for a series of macabre stories he penned for several collections. Born in 1895 in Whittlesea, the son of Harry Bark Hartley and Mary Elizabeth Thomson, educated at North Downhill Preparatory School, Clifton College, Harrow School, and finally Balliol College, Oxford. After the outbreak of World War I, he was conscripted into the Norfolk Regiment in 1917. After the war, he returned to Oxford and thereafter worked as a book reviewer. He was a hypochondriac and was not open about his sexuality until what he termed his homosexual novel, The Harness Room, was published in 1971. He died in London in 1972. He began publishing in the 1920s. The Go-Between, from 1953, received a film adaptation in 1971. The Travelling Grave and Other Stories is his most famous collection, and we shall be reviewing it today. A visitor from down under, as a conductor on a bus on a very bad weather day, finds a single passenger on the roof of the double-decker. But as the man pays, the conductor finds him monosyllabic. The coin he pays with is inhumanly cold, and his body seems very, very rigid. This man has come quite a long way to pay a visit to his old friend, the newly made millionaire Mr. Rumbold, who is the only one of the two left breathing when they last met in Australia. Podolo has a husband and wife pair of tourists who want to go on a gondola ride to Podolo, a small uninhabited isle nearby Venice. When they do get there, they find a cat on shore that was left to starve. It attacks the woman, and she goes to try and catch it, but is soon lost. When the gondolier finds her, he chooses to run away, because of the other thing on the island that is also starving. Three or four for dinner has two Englishmen in Venice go to meet an Italian count for dinner, but first they decide to haul a drowned body from the river. But after they arrive at the restaurant, they have unusual company. The Travelling Grave has Hugh Curtis accept an invitation from rich eccentric Dick Munt to his place, the Lowlands. It turns out Munt is in fact a coffin collector, who has invited a guest over that no one will miss to demonstrate his most prized possession, the Travelling Grave. Feet foremost concerns the ghost of Low Threshold Hall, the ghost of a 16-year-old woman who was abused and killed by her husband, and who keeps coming back for revenge. However, she is kept from entering the mansion by ways of a step she cannot cross over, but which obliging people carry her over nonetheless bringing misfortune and death whenever they do. The Cotillon has Jane, a very flighty sort of woman, attend a masked ball, only to be visited by a former lover she had cheated, who wants to see her unmasked, and even such a trifle as death won't get in his way. A change of ownership is a confusing story of a man locked out of his home, via strange means, and with grim consequences. The thought has Henry Greenstream hounded by a morbid thought, and the only way he can think to get rid of it is to go to church and pray out loud. The only way he can feel safe from his guilt is to go to Aston High Church, praying to get rich and for his oppressor to die. And he gets what he wants, but of course there is a denouement. Conrad and the Dragon is the only story with a fantasy setting concerning a princess, a dragon, and the horrible fate that befalls any man who tries to marry her. The island has Mrs. Santander's latest companion visit her isolated island home meeting a strange man who says he's an electrician on an errand. Yet during a most tense and unnerving evening, this proves to not be so true. Finally, Killing Bottle is the story of a man invited to an estate, only to become hunted by a madman through the upper story and the roof of the ancient house. All the stories have a grim aspect that is definitely worth a read.